Hello there, and welcome to another episode of the Creative Suite Podcast. My name is Morty Golding, a special guest in this episode, and you know what that means. This is going to be all about using Illustrator. Now, I want to focus on a question that I get from a lot of users, which is how do you put a frame or a border around an image that you place into Illustrator? Let me explain what I mean. I have a regular blank document open right now. I'm going to choose File, Place, and on my desktop, I have a folder filled with different images. I'm going to choose this one here called freakout.psd. It's actually a cute image I got from iStock photo of a kid who either is doing some kind of day trading and is not happy with the numbers he sees, or he just found out his mom is on Facebook. Um, but in either case here, we want to be able to put some kind of an outline or border around this image. The problem is, is that inside of Illustrator, we know that there are two kinds of attributes we can apply to paths, something called a fill and something called a stroke. Now, a stroke would be perfect because it actually allows us to see the outline of an object. The only problem, though, is that what I have in my document right now is an image. And an image does not have the same attributes that objects have, such as vector objects. So since this is not a vector object, it does not have the ability to display any kind of an attribute, meaning a fill or a stroke. So the easiest way I ask you to do this is what many people do, is they actually draw a rectangle on top of this, and they give that rectangle a stroke. Well, an easy way to do this is that whenever you have any image selected inside of Illustrator, you can actually come up right to the control panel and click on this mask button. When you do so, Illustrator actually draws a rectangle and then puts the image inside of that rectangle as a mask. So now what I can do is simply go here and change the color here of my stroke, and I can now see that I have an outline around this object. And if I move them together, it's basically now two elements, the mask, which has the stroke attribute, and the image that's inside of it, and both of them are grouped together so I can move them as I'm working. So that's the first thing that I wanted to show you, but the problem here is that, again, I'm dealing with two objects here, and isn't there maybe a better way that I can apply some kind of a stroke outline or maybe even a fancy kind of border to my artwork? Well, let's see how we can do that. Let me delete this image here, even though it's very cute. I'm going to choose File, Place, once again, and maybe we'll choose this one here called Superman.psd. Again, another image from iStock Photo. Nice little image right there. And many people are aware of the panel inside of Illustrator called the Appearance Panel. Very powerful panel. In fact, I believe it's probably the most important panel inside of Illustrator. So I'm going to bring up that Appearance Panel right here. And many people are aware that you can add fills and strokes to objects using the Appearance Panel. So what I can do here is I know that I have a linked file. I can add over here a new stroke by clicking on this button here called Add New Stroke. And Illustrator actually lets me do this. It lets me put a stroke on this linked file. However, if I deselect the artwork, I, I don't really actually see that black one-point stroke. And the reason why, again, is because this is an image. The odd thing is that Illustrator lets me apply the stroke, but because the object itself is not a vector object, it cannot display the stroke. So somehow, I need to convert this image into a vector object that can contain and display a stroke. So to do that, let me show you some of the interesting effects that Illustrator has that maybe you haven't paid so much attention to. If I twirl down the little stroke setting over here, I see that right now my stroke has its own opacity. If I click on the stroke, which right now you can see the stroke is highlighted, this means that if I now apply any kind of an effect, the effect will apply only to this stroke inside of this object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the effect menu, and I'm going to choose a setting here called convert to shape. You know, the first time that I saw this setting called convert to shape, I always thought it was odd because when I have a shape, let's say a star or a, set, you know, or a circle, for example, why would I ever get into a situation where I would want to convert that to a different shape? Like, why would I want to convert a star into a rectangle? It didn't seem to make a lot of sense to me. However, the Convert to Shape option here, what it's actually doing is it's taking some kind of an object, and it's converting it into a vector shape. But I'm doing that now only to this stroke. In other words, I'm taking my image, and I'm using the bounds of the image to generate a new rectangle which now can contain a stroke. So when I choose Convert to Shape here and choose Rectangle, I'm going to get this dialog box called Shape Options. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set the setting here to Relative, meaning I want it to be um, relative to the size of the actual artwork itself, but I don't want to add any extra width or extra height. I don't want there to be any space over here. So I'm just going to choose right now over here 0, and then hit Tab and hit 0. So now I have a line which hugs the border of this object right here. And if I click OK, I now see that with a single object right now, I don't have to have a group or a mask or anything else like that, I now have a visible stroke on this piece of artwork. 
So I can do this very easily as I'm working inside of Illustrator. In fact, I can do some pretty interesting things as well. Now that I have this stroke that's visible on the image, I can apply, for example, maybe a brush to this. I can do that very easily by going here to my brushes panel, and Illustrator actually ships with a whole bunch of wonderful brushes. If I come down here to the bottom left-hand corner of the panel, there's a button here where I could open up a diff, you know, different brush libraries. And if I click on that and I go down to maybe borders and then choose borders uh, primitive, for example, I have some very interesting borders here. Now, when you're working with a rectangular shape like I have right now, you just want to make sure that the brush that you have that you want to apply has a setting in this box over here. Like this one won't work because this box refers to outer corners, which is right over here. But if I, for example, clicked on this one right here, you can now see that I've added an interesting border around my image. I can click on this one here, maybe click on this one or this one. Hey, this one with the mosaic tiles is pretty cool. So you can see with just a few clicks of the mouse, I can now take any image and apply not just a plain old stroke, but also an interesting brush to that image. So that's really great. In fact, we can go one step further. Now that we can you know, apply these kinds of effects inside of Illustrator, we can also do other things. We're doing this right now to a stroke, but I can do this to other fills of that object as well. Let me explain. So let me delete this shape right here. I'm going to press D for default, so I reset everything back to where I was before. And what I'm going to do also is choose File, Place. I'm going to place another image. I have this one here called Superboy.psd. Cute little image here. This boy wants to be that superhero when he grows up. And I want to be able to maybe make this look like it's a Polaroid photo. Well, how would I do that? Well, let's start from the basics, right? We know that if I want to add a stroke, I can add a stroke here, but I can't see it because I have to now create a rectangle around it. Well, now with this stroke targeted or this stroke highlighted right now, I can go back to the effects over here, choose Convert to Shape, and choose Rectangle. I want my rectangle to be uh, have no extra width and no extra height, and click OK. And maybe I'll set the color of that to you know, maybe a lighter gray, like maybe a 40% you know, gray, for example. So we can see right now I have a light border there around that. Next, I'm going to take this object right now, and I'm going to add a fill. So before we added a stroke, now I'm going to add a fill. But you can see right now the fill is at the top of my stacking order, which means it's going to cover over the photograph here. I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to take the fill, and I'm going to drag it so that it right now appears underneath the contents, which are the pixels inside of this image. So now I'm going to highlight that fill once again, and I'm going to leave it set to black right now so we can see it, and I want to convert that to a rectangle. So again, click on the effect over here, choose Convert to Shape to a Rectangle, but this time let's modify the shape. We do want there to be extra width and extra height. Maybe I want there to be about 20 points in extra width and maybe around 60 points in extra height. So you can see now that I've added much larger of a border over here. I'm going to make sure that this is set to relative right here and click OK. And I'm going to apply yet another kind of effect inside of Illustrator called the Transform. So I'm actually going to twirl down this setting right here. And you can see now that I have the rectangle effect that I've applied. With my fill still highlighted right here, I'm going to go back to the effects here. And now I'm going to choose Distort and Transform, Transform. What this is going to allow me to do is make transformations to just that fill, which I've now converted to a rectangle, right? So if I click on the Preview button, and for example, I move this vertically around maybe 40 points, you can see what I've done here. I've actually moved or shifted that down, and it kind of looks like a, almost like a, a border of a Polaroid photo, right? If I click OK right now, and I change the fill color here to something much lighter, maybe like a, you know, like a 5% gray, for example, I now have this border around the image that makes it look like it's a Polaroid photo. In fact, for a little bit of realism here, let's just add a quick drop shadow here. So I'm now going to go ahead now to the effect here. Again, I want to make sure that my fill is right now highlighted because I want to apply this drop shadow to my fill. I'm going to click on this little effect here, go to Stylize. I'll choose Drop Shadow. And maybe we'll choose an opacity of like 50%, offsets of 2 pixels or 2 points here, and maybe a blur of 4. And let's preview that right now. Let's see how that looks. Oh, that looks really nice. Look at that. A nice little drop shadow around that image. And if I go into Outline Mode by pressing Command-Y or Control-Y, all I have in my artwork right now is just that image, right? However, I've used various appearances, meaning I've added a fill and a stroke, and I've used that powerful Convert to Shape effect to actually make those fills and strokes visible on the image, and now I get what looks like a Polaroid border on this photograph. So there's a lot of things you can do with the Appearance panel. Definitely spend some time coming up with your own fun borders for your images, and I hope that you now kind of 
go to the next level of using Illustrator for stylizing not just photos, but for all of your design needs.